Hello and welcome back to the 2024 baking challenge. Now I have chosen 52 recipes, one for every single week this year. And this is my challenge. You don't have to join along, but it would be a lot cooler if you did. So some of these recipes are going to be easy. Some of them are going to be difficult. Some are gonna be for tasty sweet treats and others are gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to put on the dinner table. You're not gonna know until Wednesday before the video is released because on Wednesday mornings, I'm gonna give you the name of what we're making and the ingredient list so that you can get your shopping done. This is week seven. I cannot believe it. It is week number seven and I'm very excited about it. We are making fresh apple cinnamon scones. And if that sounds intimidating, don't be intimidated. Scones are surprisingly easy, at least the recipe makes it look easy. We're gonna find out together. Let's get baking. It's February and I know that apple scones seems like a fall treat and you're right, it is. But I love fall any time of the year. I love apples any time of the year, and this is what I wanted to make, so we're gonna make it. <laughs> I can promise you four things out of these videos. We're baking on a budget, okay? We are cutting corners anytime that we can, because I'm not about that hard work. We are altering recipes to accommodate for the tape, the picky eater in the house and my multitude of allergies. And the last one is that I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to mess up a lot of things. I'm not a professional baker. I'm just here for a good tasty time. And I hope you are too. So to start off for, our, and I have the recipe pulled up because I will forget the measurements even though I pre-measured everything. Um, okay, this recipe should take an hour total according to King Arthur's website. I'm not buying it. I'm gonna bank in about two hours for this. Now, the scones are gonna need to sit in the freezer for about a half hour before they go in the oven, so plan ahead for that. Okay, um, hopefully that means that the assembly of this dough is gonna be very, very fast. Um, to start it off, we're gonna make the dough. So we have two and three fourths cups of all purpose flour. And I already have that in my mixer, which I'm gonna raise the bowl on now because I tend to forget that. You're also going to add one third of a cup of granulated sugar, an entire tablespoon of baking powder. It's gonna be very floofy, hopefully. That's the plan anyways. A teaspoon of apple spice or apple pie spice or cinnamon. Um, and then you need to get that all stirred up. So I'm just gonna let my mixer do that. And then we're going to be adding our butter. Now it's eight tablespoons of butter. That's one stick of butter, a half a cup of butter. Go ahead and cut it up into little pats. It just incorporates a lot better that way. Um, yeah, okay. And unlike the previous recipe, I think you can just kind of add these all in at once. Make sure your butter is cold. That's the other thing with this. Um, like so many other of the things that we've made previously, your butter needs to stay as cold as possible. So I'm just gonna stir that all in there. Set my dirty dishes aside. Other things you're gonna need for this recipe, you're gonna need a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. You're gonna wanna sprinkle that with some flour. A ruler, remember my handy little ruler that I throw in the dishwasher. You're also gonna need a big knife or a bench cutter because once we get this dough made, we're gonna put it on our parchment paper and we're gonna shape it into two floured rounds about five inches in diameter, five and a half around there which is why I have a ruler, because I don't do measurements off the cusp. So, um, let's see here. Got our butter going. Do, 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 do. So it says that the mixture is gonna be crumbly. I'm gonna kick this up a notch. Okay, and while that's doing its crumbling thing, you're gonna need three fourths of a cup of chopped apple. 
Apple needs to be about one inch pieces. You can leave the skin on if you want. I'm not gonna do that. I don't like the way that that bakes up. Um, also, apples are kind of out of season right now, so as I'm peeling here, and I could have gotten out my, I have the attachment for the KitchenAid that peels and slices, but I'm just gonna need a little bit of apple, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but because apples are out of season, I don't know if you can see this, I've got some bad spots in mind. That's one of the reasons I definitely wanted to peel it so that I could see what I'm working with. And they said like half of a, a medium apple. That's why I have about three apples. Can you ever have too many apples in a recipe? I don't think so. I love apple. And the little one loves apples too, so. So, yep, further in it's fine. Just need to cut off those bad spots. And the reason you do want your apple in kind of bigger chunks is because apples tend to shrink up when they're cooking. So you're definitely, I missed a bad spot there, a little tiny bit. So you're definitely gonna wanna account for that. Butter looks like it's starting to work in. I don't wanna overwork it, so I'm gonna turn off my mixer while I finish this. Um, I didn't cut my apple slices ahead of time because unless you're gonna set them in water or like lemon juice to soak, they're gonna turn brown really fast and that just, that just kind of grosses me out. So, so I didn't do that. Figure you can just hang out with me while I slice some apples. <clears throat> now in the past when I've made like apple cake, I tend to shred the apple um, because not everybody likes to bite into a large chunk of apple in their cake. If you've never made an apple cake before, you absolutely should because it's super good. Yeah, I'm gonna, that is probably three fourths of a cup, but I would like a little bit of apple in every bite. So, another bad spot in this one. <sighs> this is one of the reasons why we planted apple trees here at the house. We are up to seven apple trees and two pear trees now. And last year we got teeny tiny little apples from several of the trees. Um, we did not get to eat them because critters got to them first, but hopefully this is our year for getting some apples from the trees. That would be absolutely awesome. Who knows what we will plant this spring? Yes, I'm absolutely obsessed with the fact that it is spring and it's time to start planning and planting. And I love that for us. And I love that for you too, if you're gonna be planting anything. So I'm cutting these into slightly smaller pieces. Now, because I'm gonna use a mixer to add mine, um, to stir mine, it's probably gonna break these up a little bit. That's okay. It's all fine and dandy. It's no big deal. That piece is pretty gross. I'm not gonna use that one. And I'm not actually even gonna measure these apples that I'm putting in. Although, you, <laughs> I guess you do have to be careful because there's a lot of moisture in apples, so that could probably throw off the balance. Um, you know, so maybe follow the recipe. Don't, don't follow me exactly here because chaos, baking. Here I thought with such a simple recipe, I would not be messing it up, but it's okay. Okay, once you have your flour mixture and your butter all mixed up, we are going to add Mm, let's see here. Oh, cinnamon chips. Three-fourths of a cup of cinnamon chips. I love cinnamon chips. 
and we're going to add that along with our apple and three-fourths of a cup of apple. So I have my measuring cup right here. So maybe I will measure it and then I'll just eat the rest of the apple. It's going to be a heaping, a heaping bunch of apple. <laughs> three-fourths of a cup. I can't. I can't. That doesn't seem like enough apple to me. There we go. All right. Good apple. Mm. And it doesn't have to be the Granny Smith either. You can use any kind of apple. So I'm going to set that to stir. And then while that is stirring, in a separate bowl, we are going to mix up our eggs. Two eggs. And you're going to whisk these really, really well. So you've got your two eggs, your teaspoon of vanilla extract, or slightly more than a teaspoon if you don't measure it. And then we've got a half a cup of applesauce going in, right? Half a cup of applesauce. Yes. Half a cup of applesauce. I didn't even need that. And you're just going to get that all mixed up. Mix it all the way up. It looks gross. <laughs> okay. Now this is going to go into our dry mixture. Make sure I get it all in there. Excellent. Now we're going to mix it until it looks like the dough is just starting to hold together. Okay, go ahead and if you haven't already floured the surface that you're going to be turning this out on. Yes, my dough is starting to hold together, but there's still a lot of dry stuff in the bottom. So while I am waiting for that to incorporate, I'm going to clean up a little bit here. This will be going to the worms. I have a worm bin in the basement. Um, so I keep all kinds of scraps to feed the worms. But it's good for the garden. who did drop that on the ground. Also, sometimes I like to see if my cats will eat things like apples. Okay, that is absolutely holding together. It looks a little on the wet side, but that's okay. All right, make sure that your hands are clean. So what we're going to do next is we are going to divide our dough. We're gonna turn it out, divide it into half. Oh, that is not the right thing for that. Um, <laughs> you're going to need a pastry brush. You're going to need a little bit of water or milk, and you're going to need some coarse sugar mixed with some cinnamon. And I did not mix mine with cinnamon. I'm just going to use my coarse cane sugar because I feel like there's more than enough cinnamon in here with the cinnamon chips. So that's a choice that I'm making for me. All right. Get the sides scraped all the way here. I may just divide mine in the bowl. It's awful sticky. If I were a professional baker, I would know if I should add more flour or not. But since I'm not, I'm just going to leave it alone and uh, go from here. Okay, that looks about like a third. <laughs> Your hands are gonna get messy. Make sure that you have clean hands. Now, if you have a larger oven, you could absolutely do this on two separate things. I have 
a small oven. So I'm going to try to get these on one sheet so that they bake evenly. You know what? I'm going to start with this first one. So what we're going to do, let me move everything out of the way so that you can see a little bit better. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to press this. Oh boy, my hands are sticking. So I'm going to cover them in flour, press this into a five inch, five and a half inch round circle. It needs to be about three fourths of an inch thick. This is where my happy little ruler comes into play. Yeah, about five and a half, about three fourths of an inch. That was a lot simpler than I thought it would be. I've got a little bit of a bit on that side. Okay, now I'm gonna turn out the rest of this dough onto the other side over here. <laughs> Try to anyways, it's very heavy. Scones can be really heavy and that's okay. I'm gonna make sure I get all of my apple and cinnamon chunks out of there because that's the good stuff. Um, dust a little more flour on my hands, my shirt, the counter and the floor. <laughs> Chaos baking. Okay, this one's a little bit bigger than the other one and that's okay. Just doing our best here. Okay. Hold up future Katie here because past Katie did a little whoopsie. I told you I was gonna make a lot of mistakes. Even with a simple recipe, mistakes happen. That's just life, okay? Before you cut your rounds into wedges, you're going to want to brush them, I have my pastry brush, with either milk or cold water and then dust it with your cinnamon sugar or your coarse sugar mixture and then you cut them and separate them. Listen, if you've already cut them and you skip this step, it's not a big deal. Do you have to do this step at all? Probably not, it should be just fine. Or if you've already cut and separated, you can still add your sugar mixture. It's gonna be a little more time consuming, a little more tedious, and probably a little bit more messy. That's what I'm gonna do when I pull these out of the freezer. I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar before I throw it into the oven. So that's just life, you make mistakes, you figure out how to fix the mistakes and you move on. So sorry about that. Back to regularly scheduled programming. Now, what it says to do next is to use a bench cutter or a large knife that you have run under cold water. And we're going to cut these into six wedges. So let me run this under some cold water. And our well water is always cold. So I'm just gonna go like this. Apple's right there in the middle. Um, and then I guess, how do I wanna do this? <laughs> It'd be easier if it were into fourths because, and then again, like this, I'm making a complete mess out of mine. That's okay. And then you're gonna to wanna to pull it apart so that they're not exactly um, touching. You want about an inch from the edges. That way they're gonna bake all the way through. If your dough is being tricky to work with, you could stick it in the fridge for a little bit. Um, it's probably that your butter is getting a little melty which makes it hard to work with. Um, so you could stick it in the fridge or the freezer, fridge for like 20 minutes, freezer for like 10 minutes. And that should help a little bit. I'm gonna grab a fork here and see if I can't get this to move apart some. So just reach in, pull it out a little. Um, my ovens, it's very frustrating. My ovens are small. Um, at my old house, we had really a nice, really big oven. And these are significantly smaller. I had to go buy these, uh, these baking dishes, which I love. I do love my 
my Nordic wear cookie sheets, but it also kind of, kind of annoys me when I see my really big cookie sheets in the, uh, in the cabinet that don't get used in the oven because they're too big. Okay, mine's about a half an inch in some places, an inch in others. That's okay, we're just going with it. But you can definitely see that mine are pulled apart, I'm trying to make so everything is great. Okay, once you have your scones all pulled apart, you're going to put these in the freezer for 30 minutes, okay? You're also going to preheat your oven to 425, which seems really high for bread, but you're going to have frozen butter going in. Um, remember when we make pe pastry, we want that butter to be nice and cold before it goes in the hot oven because it gives it a really flaky kind of uh, texture. Same concept is going to apply to these scones. So stick these in the freezer for 30 minutes and I will see you back after that. It's been a half hour and we're back. And since I forgot to put the sugar on top before mine went into the freezer, I'm gonna try to do it now, fingers crossed. Hopefully this works and hopefully you did not forget. It's gonna be messy, that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with it, see what I can do here. Um, and my scones are pretty, pretty cold from being in the freezer. Now you're supposed to let them sit on the counter for like 10 minutes before they go into the oven. So that's fine. It's probably gonna take me like 10 minutes just to get this done. And I don't know if the sugar is going to stick. Hopefully it will. Let's find out together. Um, yeah, so I forgot. I was just so excited with how they looked and smelled that I completely skipped that whole part. Um, that's okay. Remember what I said about mistakes. We all make them, you try to fix them, and you move on. So I'm not gonna beat myself up about this. I'm not gonna beat myself up. Also, some of my scones are way bigger than the others, so they're not gonna bake all the same. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, that's okay, it's fine. Totally, I knew that was gonna happen. I have a stack of boxes waiting to go out. Um, and one of the cats just decided to knock the whole stack over. <sighs> and I don't know if anybody saw in, uh, in the Palmier video from two weeks ago that one of my cats got on the counter, which is a huge no-no here. They know better. Um, I do not put up with that. And if I had seen him, <laughs> I would have swiftly taken care of it, but I did not. He was really sneaky about it. Um, okay, let's add my sugar. Now, I'm just using this coarse cane sugar. So the recipe calls for, yeah, a lot of that's gonna stick. The recipe calls for a coarse sugar and cinnamon mixture. Um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna use this, because this is what I have. Because I wasn't understanding, like do I mix this with the cinnamon sugar? Do, is there another type of coarse sugar? Is it just granulated sugar? I wasn't sure. So I'm just gonna use this. I feel like um, with the cinnamon chips in there, that's gonna be more than enough to make me happy at least. Um, I need a little bit more sugar. I do like the way that this coarse cane sugar bakes up. It looks really pretty. Um, it doesn't exactly melt, but it gets kind of like, kind of forms into a crust almost. So I'm really excited about this. And I just got off the phone with my neighbor and told her that in a half hour, we're gonna have scones. So she can come up and try some out, see if they're any good. I'm probably putting too much sugar on these now, but I'm, 
I'm a little obsessed. So, okay, done. It's a little more messy when you do it this way as opposed to just taking care of it when it's in the round. But it's a fixable mistake. So we've got that going for us. Let me put this over here. Okay. Oven should be at 425. These are gonna go in for 18 to 22 minutes. Let me double check that um, because now I'm not sure. Okay. Do -do -do -do. Yeah, I was right, 18 to 22 minutes or until they are golden brown. When you look at the sides, they should be um, baked all the way through so it shouldn't look wet or raw, okay? So, fingers crossed, here we go into the oven. I'm gonna set my timer for 18 minutes, although I know it's probably gonna take closer to the 22, possibly 25 mark since my oven is a little wonky right now and I don't know why. Um, I should probably start using the lower oven. So I will see you back when these come out and we'll take a look and give them a taste test. All it took was 18 minutes and my scones probably are a little bit overbaked, so watch it with that. Um, they smell amazing. They look great. I'm really excited to dig into it. I've already put some butter over the top of mine. Um, I know that this is probably gonna be way too hot to really, um, that I should probably eat. It's okay. It is soft um, and not dry. I've had some scones before that have been really dry, but this is really soft. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> 100 times, absolutely, will make again. This is delicious. I like the cinnamon chips. Um, I like the apple flavor. I can definitely taste the apple flavor. The uh, top of it has got a nice crunch from the sugar and it's not overly sweet. Mm-hmm. The apples are soft. I think maybe I would cut my apples a little smaller next time. But overall, this is a really good scone and I'm really happy that I picked this recipe because this is amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Yay! Another winning recipe from King Arthur and another successful bake for week number seven. Now, when these are completely cooled off, you can wrap them in plastic wrap and keep them on the counter for a few days. You could heat them up in the microwave, but if you've ever heated bread in a microwave, you know it's gonna get kind of tough and chewy as it cools down. So stick them in the oven, eh, stick them in the oven covered in foil for like 10 minutes at like 350. And you should absolutely be golden. Um, I could see making these ahead of time, taking them someplace, having friends over for a nice brunch. This is so, so good. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I hope you got to bake along. Ignore the dishwasher going off. If you've missed the first couple weeks of the bacon challenge, bacon, baking, if you missed the first couple weeks of the baking challenge, it's not a big deal. You can go back and check out those videos. You can pick up from here. You don't have to participate. This is my challenge, not yours, but I'm inviting you to participate if you want to. Pick and choose the recipes that sound interesting to you. Just understand that I'm gonna make mistakes and so are you. That doesn't mean you should give up. You should absolutely keep baking. So if you do wanna participate in the challenge, you should go over to our Facebook page. I've posted those links below, Facebook and Instagram. Every Wednesday morning, I release the ingredient list and the name of what we're gonna be baking on Saturday so that you can do your grocery shopping. These videos are released every Saturday morning between eight and 9 a.m. Central Time. So hit the subscribe button, follow along for some tasty treats, a little bit of chaos, and a whole lot of mess. I'll see you next week.